Almost every week, I receive an email from somebody who's asking, what is shadow work? So today, I'm going to tell you exactly what shadow work is. Because of the term shadow work, it's easy to see how that can conjure up all kinds of images of dark, sinister things. Perhaps shadow work is a dark spiritual practice. Perhaps it's a process that involves the more negative or more malevolent aspects of our personality. The truth is, neither is the case. So what exactly is shadow work? We are born whole, but that wholeness is short-lived because we are relationally dependent as children. Being born relationally dependent into families that socialize us into a society that is not yet fully evolved spells trouble because it causes us to learn that some aspects of ourselves are acceptable and others are not. What is acceptable versus unacceptable depends upon the perspective of the family you're born into. The aspects of us that are seen as unacceptable, both positive and negative, are rejected by our family, and the aspects that are seen as acceptable are not. So, being relationally dependent in the name of survival, we do anything we can to disown and deny and suppress those aspects in ourselves that are disapproved of, whilst exaggerating those that are approved of. We dissociate from what we disapprove of. This creates a split within a person that we call the conscious and the subconscious. This self-preservation instinct of dividing ourselves into conscious and subconscious is in fact our first act of self-rejection. Years ago, the revolutionary psychologist Carl Jung was studying with Freud, and they, together, noticed that people had a conscious aspect and a subconscious aspect. What that means is, if you take a person, they have aspects of themselves they're aware of and aspects of themselves that they are entirely unaware of. Consciousness has long been referred to as a light. To become aware of something, you have to be able to see it the same way that you might see something that is suddenly illuminated in light. When something is unconscious, we can't see it. We're unaware of it, the same way that we're unaware of something that might be in a dark room. Because that darkness is there, we cannot see it. So what Carl Jung began to do is to refer to the aspects of a person that they themselves are unaware of, or are unconscious of, as the shadow. So the human shadow is any aspect of a person that is not exposed to the light of their own consciousness. The reason that the human shadow contains mostly what we would consider negative things is because most of us tend to deny, suppress, disown, and reject aspects of ourselves that we feel are negative. But one of the biggest misconceptions about shadow work is that the negative is all that's contained in the shadow. That couldn't be farther from the truth. While we are more likely to suppress jealousy than to suppress a particular talent we might have, the human shadow often contains disowned or rejected aspects of the person that are truly positive. This is especially true for people who struggle with shame and low self-esteem. I'll give you an example of how the positive can end up in the human shadow. Let's say that a girl is born with a definite sense of self. She knows who she is, she knows what she likes, she knows exactly what she doesn't like, and she for sure speaks her opinion. But let's say that she came into a family that thinks that little girls should be seen and not heard. Little girls should keep sweet. Little girls should not assert their opinion. The aspects of her that are confident and assertive will be rejected by the family, so for the sake of survival in the social group, she will also begin to reject that in herself. She will deny that aspect of herself in order to get love, to the degree that as an adult she will most likely be sweet, quiet, and obedient. Her life will be painful because she has exiled part of herself. She is divided. As an adult, she may work with someone to discover what feelings or beliefs or memories are part of her subconscious and discover that she is in fact confident and assertive. When she re-owns that aspect of herself, she will have the confidence to create a life that feels good and assert herself to those around her instead of remain obedient to those around her. I'll also give you an example of how the negative ends up in the human shadow. Let's say that you have a child, and that child feels really angry. But they are born into a family where anger is not okay. So when they feel angry, they're shamed for that anger. They're punished for it. They will try to disown, reject, and dissociate themselves from that anger in every way that they can. But the anger doesn't go away. 
he just consciously denies it. It becomes subconscious. As an adult, this person will most likely not have any awareness that he has anger in him at all. He will not and cannot see himself clearly because he's denied that aspect of himself. So when people tell him, man, you're really angry, I can really feel the anger in you, he will not relate to that at all. He will probably only relate to himself as easygoing. If he works with someone to discover the feelings and beliefs and memories that are a part of his subconscious, he may discover that he really is angry and that that anger has been coming out all along in passive-aggressive ways and hurting the people around him. If he addresses the anger directly, his passive-aggressive behavior will cease to exist and his relationships will become much more enjoyable. When we deny, suppress, or disown something, it doesn't disappear. It just fades from our conscious awareness. This is the real reason why we do so many things in life that we don't understand why we're doing. It's why we feel completely out of control of ourselves. We're adults. We have conscious minds. We should be able to do this better, and yet we keep falling into the same patterns, doing the same crap. That's because of your shadow. Here's the number one reason, though, that people resist shadow work. To acknowledge something that you have suppressed into your subconscious mind because you've rejected it or disowned it or denied it, then you must come face to face with the pain of having had to fracture yourself and lose an aspect of yourself for the sake of being loved. The original pain of rejection will come up every time you do that shadow work. In other words, it will bring up the same feeling of rejection that we were met with the first time around from our parents and caregivers. And so it makes us feel like we're going to be exiled or punished again. It sets off our survival mechanisms and thus makes us feel like we are quite literally going to die. No wonder self-awareness isn't so easy to attain. <laughs> Every human in existence that was ever socialized, which is pretty much everyone on Earth, has gone through this process of splitting themselves into parts, splitting themselves into conscious and subconscious. This self-rejection is the birth of self-hate, and the emptiness that we feel is the remainder that's left over of those aspects of ourselves that we have suppressed and denied and disowned and thus lost. But the entire universe is on our side to try to help us to become whole again. Every process in the universe is headed in the direction of growth and expansion. And so, the self that is fractured seeks to become unified we will be presented with every single opportunity to see the aspects of ourselves that we have rejected and denied and disowned. We will be provided every single opportunity to confront our shadow self. So it doesn't really matter how far we run or how well we think we might hide. Our shadow will keep chasing us until we are willing to do the work that must be done with it. This is really what shadow work is all about. It's about consciously doing the work of becoming conscious of what has become unconscious. Now, unfortunately, shadow work has become a rather controversial process, <laughs> especially in the positive focus community. For this reason, I want you, if you're watching this video, to also watch my YouTube video that's titled Shadow Work versus Positive Focus. Shadow work can be painful, it is true. Self-awareness does not come naturally to those who make a practice of avoiding pain, because to become aware of those aspects, you must stop trying to escape the pain and emptiness within you where those missing parts should be. But it is also the key to a consciously aware and free life. Shadow work is now a term often used in spiritual and psychology circles to describe any process of which there are thousands to make the subconscious conscious. And the more aware you are of your shadow, the more embodied you are as a conscious being. No one ever reached enlightenment without confronting their shadow and exposing it to the light of consciousness. Ultimately, shadow work is the work of bringing attention and love to those aspects of yourself that have previously been rejected. So if you ask me, shadow work is in fact the highest form of light work that you can do. Have a good week.